Power the Dog, what did you think? Um, I thought that it was, I thought it was really good. And I was yeah. on the fence a mm -hmm. little throughout the movie because they don't, they don't, um, they assume that their audience is a hundred percent bought in. Yeah. Like they do not insult you as an audience. They're Ooh. like, look, you're in like, you gotta be in. You uh, have they, to they be trust, paying attention. The yeah. filmmaker trusts you completely as an audience where it's like, mm -hmm. like we're in this. So yeah, there's no, uh, I was on the fence a little bit just cause I was like, where is this going? Kind of like, what is it? about kind of what's yeah. it doing is this just like a kind of a old west snapshot kind of like this is the li their life mm -hmm. kind of thing and it did feel like it was leading to some um it felt like it was leading to some conflict to yeah. something was like it it gave you that uneasy feeling as you were watching it kind of of like what is the conflict going to be like where is it like i know something's coming something's happening i feel it building but I don't really know exactly what it's going to be yet. And so the movie really, it's its almost like Ali, you know, the famous boxer. Oh, yeah. Where he's like, you know, waiting it out. Yeah. He's like waiting to, to throw his like winning combo of punches yeah. to like. Yeah, you're like, oh, this is graceful like a butterfly. And then it stings yeah. you. Yeah, where it's like. It's like, okay, so I it, 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 it kind of waits till the last little yeah. bit and then it throws the knockout punch, you know. Yeah, it's a movie that asks you to infer a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Like instead of like yeah. showing you something that happens like directly, it'll help. It'll make you infer what happened and like, re and part of that sounds like bad storytelling. But if you think about it, it forces you really to dig into the character's psyche. Right. Um, and yeah, like you said, it's one of those movies where you really don't know what it was going after until like the very final minutes of the movie. Well, and also this is a great movie for us to talk about in this episode because it is based on a book right. that is not thought to be autobiographical, mm -hmm. but there is speculation because the author grew up like in right. that area and like in that lifestyle kind of, yeah. uh, that it could be that hopefully it's not <laughs> right. anything that his actual life was like because it's pretty dark, but um, that, you know, maybe he was drawing on some, yeah, something he saw or some well, stuff like it, that. It's certainly that is kind of the area yeah. he grew up in. It's certainly commentating on a real time in America history and yeah. like how masculinity was perceived at that time. And I was reading something from the director, Jane Campion, and she was talking about mm -hmm. how it's really important exactly when it takes place in history yeah. like the 1920s where it is a western there are cowboys but she was like the wild west was over and so these yeah. cowboys are trying to be the cowboys of old so there yeah. is this performative aspect of that's it that's what that's one element yeah. i really liked about it where it was like there were some characters that were fully embracing yeah the future and some were clinging as hard as they possibly yeah. could to the past and the old way of yeah. life. Well, and I don't, at first, were you buying Benedict Cumberbatch as like this rough, like get his hands dirty man's man? You know, because I, because I heard something interesting about that casting. I was, um, I bought that he was a real cowboy, like yeah. that he knew how to be a rough and tumble cow. Like I bought that part of it, but I like, as the movie went on and was like, this guy's not a murderer. Mm -hmm. Like this guy isn't a, like this guy's not a killer. Yeah. He, he kind of puts that on. Like he mm -hmm. is kind of rough around the edges and is crazy and could do anything and kind of a loose cannon and, all this stuff, but he like I was like, this guy is not a killer. Like this guy's not like deep down this he's not yeah. that. Yeah, I I read that she casted him because he's more known for playing less like man like quote unquote archetypal manly characters. Sure. And so like the more like educated bookish characters. Right. And because without spoiling anything, his character in the movie 
is someone who is like hiding parts of himself and mm. putting on a overly masculine front to mask like things he's repressed. Yeah. So the audience, when they look at Benedict Cumberbatch, can sense there's something off about his performance. Yeah. Where it's like, he's not normally a man's man, but right. he is in this movie. And she wanted you to feel that disconnect. Yeah. Um, well, I... That being said, I do think Benedict Cumberbatch did a great yeah. job of playing yeah. that out, like playing the like experienced rough cowboy. Like yeah. he he did a good job of that. It was a really interesting character study to watch him the whole movie, like slowly unravel and feel threatened by his brother's marriage, mm -hmm. and then feel threatened by um, his new, uh, I guess, um, nephew. Yeah, who is like directly like feminine yeah like like uh, and like they're the other cowboys are kind of calling them like derogatory names you know mm -hmm. you can fill in the blank yeah. and you can get the sense that his character inside is is struggling with that but is repressing it yeah and to see him like slowly unravel and how men in those days and even men today repress their true selves and like how that hurts people yeah. Like it hurts you and it hurts people around you. Like how he harasses Kirsten Dunst. Yeah. Dude, the piano scene had me so tense. I, could, I had to yeah. pause the movie. When she went to play the piano, I had to pause yeah. the movie. I was like, yeah, and he's kind of waiting there yeah. in the bed. Yeah. In the upstairs room. Yeah. Yeah. That was crazy. I, um, without giving too much away, I do want to talk about the ending of the movie yeah. where they read the scripture verse right mm -hmm. yeah um do you remember what the scripture verse was yeah it's the it's the i don't remember exactly what psalm but it's the one jesus reads on the cross i'm pretty sure it's that same yeah. psalm um and it was the first half of it was about protecting people mm -hmm. from uh like violence or something like that right yeah i was hoping you could remember the whole thing well the movie starts with the son narrating how his mom's a widow now and he has to do whatever he can to protect her. Right. And well, at the end he reads the scripture about, um, like, uh, lead me from my enemies and from the power of the dog or something like that. Yeah. Um, oh, I can look up the verse. Yeah. I thought that was a, a really interesting way to end the movie because the whole time really in the story you you do forget a little bit about like that's a really interesting movie title and you forget what the title of the movie is kind of yeah as you're watching what is it yeah. you want to read it real quick uh save my soul from the sword yeah my only life from the power of the dog or my beloved from the power my of the dog from the power of yeah. the dog so I thought that was fascinating to read that and then to realize and connect the dots at the very end of the movie that the the one with the sword wasn't who you thought it was right like benedict cumberbatch character plays this brash rough person that everybody's kind of scared of and like walking mm -hmm. on eggshells around and you think he's this person and then this kid reads this first at the end of the movie and you yeah. realize that the danger was not who you th was not where you thought it was the entire time because I thought of it in that along that way that I was explaining it before. It was like Benedict Cumberbatch plays this rough and tumble person that seems mean and angry and just cruel. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, this guy's not a like he's not a killer. Yeah. But the person that was, you know, mm -hmm. well, uh, even Benedict Cumberbatch, and he has that conversation with him out yeah. in the uh, in the countryside where this like the kid says, you know, my dad thought i was too strong and he's like you strong yeah mm -hmm. but that just plays to the whole like um the way in which like people read into gender roles and yeah. repress stuff it's like even the kid was repressing things well yeah and he and, was buying into it like this gender role like he has to protect his mom at all costs yeah. well and the the movie takes some really really great visual oh it's beautiful uh oh my gosh yeah it's there are some visually stunning parts of the movie, but just like the subtle things that they do with the rabbit mm -hmm. and like hinting at you mm -hmm. what you need to yeah. know, but 
aren't they're not outright coming and they're not having a exposition dialogue about this yeah. stuff that it, it it's you it's a visual medium it's using the visuals to hint yeah. and tell you what's going on in the story yeah. and it's trusting that you as the audience you're going to pick up on it and mm -hmm. and uh, receive kind of that message well it's got it's got one of those final shots where part of you's like oh that, that's like a happy ending and you're like wait no it's not yeah because like if you play like if you imagine the movie continuing and i'm like that's that's a situation that's gonna yeah keep rearing its ugly head yeah um like you think the like you think the problem was solved but i'm also watching going like no there's another problem too like that wasn't the answer yeah you know whenever they were referring to uh benedict cumberbatch's cumber <laughs> cumber cumberback cumber, cumbersome cumberbatch's education his character yeah and and like his education mm -hmm. what do you think that they were trying to say like do you think that that was furthering the character of like he's not really who he's pretending to be yeah i think kind of well like or, i think that played with like also like why was it such a big deal for um uh what's his name uh jesse plemons yeah uh, jesse character? plemons to say like you need to wash up yeah like I think his fear on being clean and washed and his fear of like people knowing how educated and like smart he is plays into, Oh no, if people know that they won't see me for the tough manly guy I am because he's trying so hard to hide his inner like sexuality. Yeah. Like his true sexuality. Well, and, and Bronco, uh, Bronco, uh, Bronco, Henry, Bronco, Henry. Yeah was the only one that ever truly saw him. Yeah. And that I was think. the only person like you and infer, like he connected with like, yeah. intimately. Yeah. And I think the reason why he well, and now I'm, I'm starting to get into some real spoiler territory yeah. now. Well, yeah. So I don't want to get too yeah. deep into it, but the reason why, um, him and, uh, his nephew kind of start to, to get closer is because I think he He's, he sees that he could help this kid the way yeah. that Bronco Henry helped him. Yeah, I think he could see him playing the Bronco Henry role for sure and yeah. reliving that moment. Yeah, it's there's just a lot of like really interesting power shifts and getting into the thoughts of the characters and like I really like movies that make you participate in. Um, reading the character's mind and not so obviously telegraphing what everyone is thinking. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Well, to a degree. something something I noticed about this movie too was that um, I think a lot of times westerns they will paint the town that they're in or the people that they're around or um, they'll kind of paint those situations as envious. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, that looks like really nice, really cool. Like, like with the setting, like kind of like the set of like a saloon that you're in yeah. or something like that. And that's like, wow, that looks really cool. Like how cool would it have been to be in one of those like really ornate old saloons yeah. or whatever. But I almost feel like this movie is probably a little more realistic yeah. where it's like not enviable whatsoever. Like they're mm -hmm. driving this cattle into this small kind of yeah. run down dusty town and the plate, the restaurants where they are and the yeah. hotel that they're staying at is not a nice looking place. And it does not look like a place yeah. you'd want to be. Though their, their home was really nice. Their home was cool. Yeah. But, uh, I, I thought that, that first yeah. shot, uh, that first kind of scene where they are pushing the cattle through yeah. the town, I was like, Ooh, this is different. Like this feels different. Like yeah. there's an eeriness to it and like a hopelessness kind of to this, which Ooh. I think was on purpose to make it feel like there's nothing for Kirsten Dunst and her son in this town. There's nothing for them mm -hmm. here. Like it's, it's dead. It's, there's just nothing happening yeah. there. Yeah, no, I, I thought it was really good. It's one of those movies where the more you think about it and reflect on it, the more you like it. Yeah. And I mean, it for me, it's like a top 10 movie for this year. Um, I think it's going to be definitely an, an awards contender. Yeah. And the best part of it all, it's on Netflix for you to watch. And so like one yep. of the best movies of the year, a movie that's going to be talked about come Oscar season, you can watch it right now. You don't have to go to the theater. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. That's a good suggestion. 
That is a good Power of the Dog. That's a really suggestion. great suggestion of a movie to watch. 